Hi everyone, hello and welcome back to a brand new piercing video. So, about a year ago, I did a video about dangerous body modifications. I had like top five, I think it was like a top five dangerous modifications that you shouldn't get. Now in that video, I did mention snake eye piercings and I really wanted to make a video just kind of about snake eye piercings on its own, just because if anyone is looking for this kind of piercing, they can go straight to this video rather than having like a list video where they have to search through. So just in case anyone doesn't know what snake eye piercings are. So basically it is a flat barbell or a banana barbell and like a, one of the curved barbells that goes like horizontally through your tongue. So it goes in one side and out of the other side and it does like have these two balls that sit sort of like horizontally in the front of your tongue. So one of the first reasons why you shouldn't get this piercing is because you're basically combining your tongue muscles. So your tongue isn't just one muscle. So basically what you're doing is when you're putting this one bar that goes through the tongue that way, you're restricting its movement. You're restricting the way that you're able to talk. Now the way that I demonstrated this before is think about your hand. Your hand is very free lots of freedom, blah, 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 blah. So what happens when you put them together and put something that restricts it and holds it together like this? Your, your movement in your hand has become very greatly restricted and you can't do as much as you used to be able to do. And that's basically what you're doing with your tongue. So you're putting this one bar that goes all the way through and you can't like move it very well. Your speech will become different. Like take for example this, when you do that with your tongue, you can't do that anymore because you've put one bar all the way through. Not saying that that's what you're gonna do every single day, but like that's a demonstration of things that you can't do anymore. Like you can't move your tongue in specific ways. You can think of that as you want to in a filthy way, I guess. Now, reason number two is teeth damage. You are basically asking for your teeth to have its enamel ripped out because, it... so you've got these two balls. Hmm, mm hmm, then there. And that's gonna be hitting your teeth on the inside constantly, all the time. When you talk, when you eat, when you do things, it's gonna constantly be going ting, 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 ting. Yeah, what the hell was that? It's constantly gonna be doing that in the inside of your teeth and your teeth are gone to chip. They're gonna chip, the enamel's gonna start coming off your teeth, you're gonna have tooth damage, you're gonna have tooth erosion, and you're also gonna be having gum erosion on the inside too. Now the gum bit here on the inside will slowly wear itself down and become receded, and you can potentially have your teeth out and they can fall out because you've receded your gum too much. So I would definitely say, do not get this piercing for damaging your teeth. Teeth are really, really important to me. They're not like, my bottom ones aren't straight, but like the top ones are quite nice and they're nice and white. I like, I, you know, I keep my teeth fibrous. So the thought of having something that will damage the teeth like that, and I know you're gonna say you've got two lip piercings and yes, these have the potential to damage my teeth, but I've had them for like, well, I've had this one at least for almost 10 years and I've had this one for about three. They don't touch my teeth. I think because my, my teeth aren't straight completely at the bottom. They're kind of like in a position where like it doesn't touch my teeth. Also, not every single person can actually get this done just because you have to have, your, your tongue has to be thick enough for you to be able to do it, else it will just reject. And talking about rejection, oh my God, this piercing does count as a surface piercing. Because of where it goes, it does count as a surface piercing and it can reject, it can have like migrate out of your body and it can leave you, oh, oh my gosh, it can leave you with hideous scars, like hideous scars on your tongue. And your tongue can look quite deformed because of it, if it does reject. And that's something that you have to really keep in mind because of where it is, it can migrate. It is also a lot more risky when it comes to blood vessels and veins and potentially going through something that you shouldn't. Now, most piercers, if they do go to do this piercing, they should check your tongue out properly. And let's just be honest, not every single piercing studio or every piercing shop is gonna do everything like well. I've had one or two piercings done myself, done by someone who hasn't done the best job, like when my scaffolding bar went into my ear and my ear grew over my ear, like the bar. So I've had my fair share of like bad piercers. So if some piercers don't do it and they don't check your tongue properly, they can potentially pierce through quite a vital vein. Now I already know I'm gonna get people commenting. I got mine done and it's perfectly fine. Mine never hurt me, I'm perfectly fine. There's always exceptions. There is always exceptions to the trends, to the, like anything. But for the majority of people, this piercing is going to be problematic. For the majority of people, surface piercings do reject. You might be very lucky and it doesn't cause you any stress or anything like that. Like I am with my lip piercings, because these ones don't touch my gum or my teeth at all. Like they don't cause me any da like damage. So. I'm very lucky and you might be very lucky with snake eye piercings and you might have it and it's perfectly fine, but for the majority of people, it is going to be a problematic thing to get. Now, a lot of piercers will refuse to actually do this because it's a controversial one. It definitely is surrounded by a lot of taboo kind of things and people will be like, well, don't get it. And most piercers will probably like refuse or say to you, 
think about it. Now the healing process of this piercing is a lot different than a normal tongue piercing because you are going through a lot more muscle, a lot more sort of tissue than you would if you were just going directly down in the middle of your tongue. So the swelling can be a little bit more sort of intense than normal ones and you can get a little bit more discharge than normal. And because of where it is and you will be hitting it quite often, it will swell a little bit more than normal. So the bar that you do get pierced with will be very, very large, which again in itself is gonna be very problematic because you're probably gonna bite down on quite a lot. Just in the off chance that you are going to get it, the healing process is relatively fast just because it is a mouth piercing. Most like oral piercings do take a little bit less time to heal than normal. So it's kind of between like up to two months and it should be properly healed. If you are gonna get it, make sure you do clean it. Do not use alcohol uh, mouthwash because that can potentially make the like tongue start to try and grow over it. So do not, I don't really understand why, but do not use alcohol um, mouthwash, but make sure you do clean it with salt water. I know it's not the nicest thing to put on your tongue because it does taste a bit gross, but get some salt water in a cup, a pinch of salt, salt rock salt, put some boiling water, let it cool down a bit, and then get like a cotton wool swab and just sort of swab it on the outside. Or I guess you could just point maybe submerge your front of your tongue. If you can get the pot, pot and go, mm, like that, and just have, like have your tongue sort of submerged into the like the water. So that could like, hold it there for like a minute or so just to really clean it out and it should be fine. Do not, do not, do not, after having it done, have oral sex because that's gonna put bacteria into your piercing and that's not gonna be very good. Try to avoid smoking as well because it's got not gonna be good for the healing process. It can slow it down and actually cause you infections. Try to stay away from things like caffeine because it does increase your blood, sort of like your blood flow, it doesn't, it increase your heart rate, I get, yeah, increase your heart rate, there we go, I'm technical. And it can cause your tongue to bleed and like it can point damaging. There can be a chance of like real bleeding and real, Fear of death, really. Let's be honest, fear of death. You have to, do, oh my God, just please be careful. Please be careful. All in all, I would say just stay away from this piercing. I know that they look quite cool, but just, it's just, to me, it's just not worth the risk and it's just not worth the potential tooth damage and all the things that it can do. Like, it just, I just don't get why you'd want to put yourself through that. Again, if you have it and it's perfectly fine, that's great for you, but not every single person is going to have this experience and I'm here just to let you know that this isn't one that you should necessarily go in easy and actually really think about what you're doing before you actually do it because it can have some long lasting effects. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Please leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. Make sure you hit that like button and do come and follow me on all of my social medias, my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All the links are in the description too. Come follow me, we can chat and have fun. Massive shout out to Kelly, Stephanie, and Teresa, who are my top three patrons. I love you all so much. If you wanna become a patron as well, there's a patron link down there and you can maybe help me do this full time. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go and I love you and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.